Jeff Seiler was the next one and uh, asking if Kroll actually died. And thank you very much for telling him, uh, no, he shows up later on, because I didn't remember that part. That's uh, one of the things that I rely on uh, that gal for. You have definitely an encyclopedic memory for, uh, for service material that I forgot a long time ago. Well, I know that in Florak, there's a line of dialogue about his Krull been acting up and he escaped. He, he almost escaped, but they managed to get him before he could escape. And then there's the bit with Weistop, but then I thought about it. I'm like, wait a minute. I think the Weistop line might be the guy that Julius picked to lead the army was the one that beat, defeated the army. I'm like, now nah, I got to go back and look and make sure. I mean, Krull doesn't die, but at the same time, I, don't, I can't remember if Krull comes back. It's just, it's encyclopedic, but there's a lot of stuff in there. <laughs> well, it, it, one of the big pluses with you is that you usually have a good idea of where it is that you're looking for. You may not remember what's there, but uh, you, you, you know either where it is in the storyline or where it got talked about on the blog and mail or whatever else. What's, uh, so during the last Kickstarter, I was it, was, it was really weird. I'm on a moment of service, reading comments about the Kickstarter. I'm on the Kickstarter reading comments, and then I'm emailing back and forth with uh, Sean, Ben, and David ideas, and that's the idea for a Spider-Verse parody came up, and I'm like, okay, and I sent them a, a, the sp cover of Spider-Verse number one, and Ben's like, doesn't have enough characters. We need something with like 50 Spider-Men, and I'm like, all right, and I go back on Google and found Spider Geddon, which has 50 spider characters. And then the next day, I'm like, all right, we need to have a lot more than four aardvarks because if, if we're going to do a cover and it's going to be the same image of service over and over but just different sizes, it, it's not going to be as neat. So I'm scanning all these images, like uh, all the following service covers. Uh, I had a list in my head of, I need to get this, I need to get this. Like, I grabbed my copy of Spawn 10 and got a couple McFarlane services that, you know, we'll put these in the back, really small. And I wanted to get the image of Cerberus from Mines when he gets the vision of, if you had had the medallions, the helmet, and the shield, they would have turned to gold, the statue would have come to life, and you would have, you know, conquered the world. And I'm like, there's an image there of Cerberus with the, with the gold sword and shield and medallions, That'll be perfect for this idea. And I'm going through and I'm going through and I'm like, ha, ha, ha. There's only, there's the pic, the image of where the medallions, the helmet and the sword point onto them. And it's only a half figure. It's not a full figure. And the next page, there's a full figure and he's about a quarter of an inch big. Yes. And I'm, I'm like, ha, ha, ha. It's a great image. It would look perfect on the cover if it was... Four times as big. <laughs> I'm like, well, I guess we'll have to go with one of the other 55 things I found. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or or drag Sean into it and say, can you do this 400% uh, the size that it is and not make it look like uh, somebody downloaded it from uh, from a thumbnail drawing? Well, and, and that's, it's one of those... You know, there's part of me that's like, oh, I want this. And then I'm thinking, well, we could take a regular service with the medallions, the sword, and the helmet, and color them. And, you know, and there's all the digital trickery that is way beyond my skills. Way, way beyond. I, I tried to, I started making a mock-up cover, and I got about four characters on. And then all of a sudden, I put the unbettable Vark in, and for some reason, he's 8,000 times too big. And I'm like, okay, I don't know Photoshop, I don't know my generic Photoshop knockoff. This is why Sean makes money at this and I run a blog. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, uh, I did the, uh, the first drawing of uh, Spider Bark. I did really, really big. One of the things that uh, uh, I'm learning about the wrist is if I ink with the wristband on, the inking goes down in quality, I'd say, between 20 and 30%. So I'm trying
trying to figure out, well, okay, what if I do something uh, much bigger than it's actually going to be reproduced? And can I make up some of that 20 or 30 percent just on the size of it? So you will be emailed the full size uh, spider bark drawing from the cover, and that'll that'll give you another spider bark to work with. Okay. Well, that's, like I said, I mean, just just scanning stuff and trimming it and, and going, okay, you know, what what exactly do we, would we have access to? And and this isn't even like regular issues. This is like one-offs or like I said, following service and stuff. And I like I said, I think I got up to fifty, fifty or fifty-five, and I still hadn't touched any of the six thousand pages that are in the graphic novel. David basically made, made your life a nightmare for a little while there <laughs> by saying that, uh, well, I, that's, oh, no, 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 we need, we need, we need hundreds of these things. Well, it, it, like, at first I was all worried, like, oh my God, this is, this is going to take forever and I don't have the abilities and this is, this is a nightmare. And then it dawned on me, you guys are a year or so ahead at the earliest that we would even need a cover mock-up. And if it takes me a week to do one, and I have 50, that's a year. Yeah, that's one of the reasons that I try to keep um, the one-year lead time at least, because it's amazing how quickly that gets eaten up, where it's, it's a complete tortoise in the hare situation. Uh, get across the finish line. Don't... Uh, don't tell yourself, oh, no, I got plenty of time, because that's the perfect way to completely blow it when, uh, when you don't want to blow it. Just, just the fact that uh, uh, the late, it's, um, the, the Iron Man Corps, number one, is the latest one being solicited, and it's like, holy smokes, that's, uh, that's not far behind where we are in terms of completely finished. I'm working on the July issue, but there's there's stuff that needs to be done with the March issue and the April issue. And uh, it's running ahead of the freight train. Uh, it's still a freight train. If it's, if it's in the next county behind you, great, that's, that's good. But you're not getting off of the train track. And when it comes around the bend, and that's that's a little too late to go. Maybe I should start running. No, maybe you should have been running for the last uh, six, last six months, the last eight months, when when you, when you still had a chance to do so. Uh, okay, getting ready. We're, we're coming down to uh, oh the, uh, the Steve Swenson talking about the uh, the autograph. That's a very weird experience. Looking at, as somebody looking at um, what is clearly a fake Dave Sim signature, or either a, uh, a real Dave Sim signature that somebody added uh, an authentic number one uh, handwritten to it. It's um, if it, if it wasn't for the fact that no, I. Uh, I would not. I would never have signed a counterfeit. Uh, it's an authentic number one. It's not something that I could make a mistake on. As soon as I look at Pink Floyd, it's like it's either a clean Pink Floyd or it's a counterfeit Pink Floyd. And uh, if it's a counterfeit, then okay, you can have you can have Neil Adams or you can have Frank Rosetta in terms of signatures. The only the only person who has a uh, an autograph, a Dave Sim autograph counterfeit is Margaret List. And that was because she got the last autograph at the last signing in 2010 at 3 o'clock in the morning, 3.30 in the morning. And part of me had already gone to sleep, and I signed it. I went, it's a counterfeit. I'm not supposed to sign it, Dave Sim. So... Margaret, Margaret definitely got something that nobody else has got. That's, that's when, I, when I posted the uh, image, I commented on it saying, 
I only know of one counterfeit with an authentic signature, and Margaret has it. Right, Margaret? And if I remember, she posted pictures, and it's, you signed your name, crossed it out, wrote oops, and then signed Frank Frazetta, and then she handed you an authentic number one, and you signed that. Right. And it's like, that story is well, well told. I, I, at, at least I crossed it out. It was one of those things of going, all right, you've already made the mistake. Are you just going to make it worse? <laughs> Well, I mean, and it's, it's, I highly doubt Margaret would ever sell that issue, so the chances of somebody stumbling across it. But that's, yeah, that when, when he sent it in, he's like, it's obviously a counterfeit, and somebody obviously forged Dave's signature. And I'm like, I wonder how many there are out there where somebody went, oh, it's a counterfeit number one, it's worthless. Ah, I'll sign it, and then it'll be worth something. And then they find out Dave doesn't sign the counterfeits as Dave. Dave signs them as Frank or Neil. Yes. Well, that's, unfortunately, that's one of those really inside baseball things in terms of the therapist's uh, end of the comic book field where most people don't know about that. Um, so that's one of those things I do encourage the therapist collectors and the therapist uh, people who buy therapist collectibles and are always haunting eBay and whatnot and the various auctions. Uh, anytime you see something like that where you go, uh, no, I can just about 100% guarantee you that that isn't what you, that you think it is and post it to their comment, comment section, that's um, the closest, I think, that we can come as therapist uh, people to having some sort of diplomatic contact with the rest of the comic book field. It's like, uh, okay, you, you, you don't want to talk about Dave Sim and you don't want to talk about his work, but uh, here he will try and save some of you from uh, having the, the, a fraud perpetrated upon you by asking the service man to help out with it. And uh, I... No thanks needed, but uh, no real danger of anybody thanking us. But we'll, we'll just try and do what's right. Well, that was there was a service number one after the last time that the counterfeit thing came up, and I got Sean post posted something about this is how to tell it. You know, multiple steps of multiple places to look. You know, Floyd is on there. The uh, counterfeit, uh, the page with the dragon where the counterfeit service is all black was on there, and shortly afterward, a number one came up for sale on eBay, and the guy said, it's a counterfeit, and posted pictures, but they weren't high-res pictures, and people were complaining, but he had the counterfeit service, you know, this is, you know, it's it's the black service, it's very much not the real thing, and I'm like, hey, we do good work, we, you know, we, we gave someone a clue of, if, you, if you're not sure if it's real or not, Floyd's one way, and the other one is, flip to the dragon, if, if service isn't gray, it's counterfeit. And the glossy inside front covers, too. But you really need to see uh, a real one to understand. Most people not being familiar with printing don't understand the difference between uh, uh, glossy and matte finish uh, inside covers. If you can see one of if you can see them side by side, then you go, oh, glossy and not glossy. But if you're just looking at the comic book and it's in mint condition, it's like, well, it seems to be reflecting light. I suppose it could be called glossy. So, yeah, we'll, we'll stick with Pink Floyd and the Dragon. Hey, there's a good name for a rock band. <laughs> Pink Floyd and the Dragon. Okay, Matt, that's going to do it for this time. Well, thank you once again. All right, you, uh, you watch your inbox for... Uh, for your spider, spider bark pages. Will do. Uh, I got an email about the stuff for Comics Link. That's for that's going up in a couple of days, right? Or it's supposed to? What's that? Uh, the items for auction on Comics Link. Uh, I don't know about that. The last that I heard from Rolly, there's like a, they had like a half dozen things that they hadn't put in, uh, in any of their auctions. And I haven't really heard why that hasn't been in their auctions. So uh, Molly was just in today, but I was uh, I was out of 
is the, at the out, at the art store in Waterloo buying art supplies. So he'll be in next Thursday, and I'll make that one of the questions that I will ask him. Is uh, has Comic Link uh, posted the material that we sent to them, and have they posted all of the material? Okay. Otherwise, I'm just going to edit the scans like I normally do, saying this is what might be up for auction. Because that's what I normally say is this is what's supposed to be there. If it's not there, I don't know what to tell you. Okay. I think what I'm going to do, uh, having done the, the Green Dante Green Virgil with this sort of like uh, mammoth package of everything, here's all of the stuff applying to the cover, I'm going to try doing one piece at a time of uh, the spider bar and uh, maybe we we can have art for the masses, art for the cerebus masses. You, you might be able to get um, this first tracing paper drawing of spider bar for, who knows, 20 bucks, 25 bucks. That's one of the things that we'll find out. We can, uh, I've got, I've got a cerebus arm sitting here. It's disembodied from anything else, but it's the service arm. We can auction that. Uh, some, somewhere we're going to find something that everybody can afford. Okay. All right, well, I'll let you get going because I'm sure you got a prayer time coming up. Uh, not too far away. Um, okay, say hi to Paula and uh, Janice Pearl and Natasha for me. Will do.